Hey, what's going on there, Dice Rollers? Paul here, and I'll be your DM for a little while. And I continue on in my series of the 99 Cent subclass. Today, we're talking about the Warlock subclass, the Tarrasque. Now, before I get into this today, if you're brand new here to the channel, first of all, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for clicking that play button. I would love for you to be part of this community. So go ahead and click that subscribe button and you get videos like this in your inbox on a regular basis. All right. So today we're talking about the Warlock subclass, the Tarrasque. Let's get into it. This is also done by Gabriel Grow, DM Zen, who once again, I've done a number of his. And I'm, I'm, I think I have some others in the queue that are not done by him, but like I said, these are the ones that are recommended to me uh, by the N World um, newsletter that I'm a part of, and so I think these are really, really quality subclasses. So it's hard for me to to uh, to turn them down because I think they're so cool, and I want to share them with you. Uh, but uh, like I said, I think there are some other creators uh, that have done some as well. So we'll get into those later on. So let's go and move on down. I'm going to save all this flavor over here to the left, all this stuff over here to the left. I'm going to save that for you, which I encourage you to, like I said, all the links will be down below to purchase this for yourself, as well as all the subclasses have. Go out and support those creators. Uh, you can use these not only for yourself, if you're a DM, you can use these as big bads, as NPCs, fun things that your, your, your uh, players have not seen. Uh, or you can use them as if you're a player, you know, as well, you can use these and see if your DM will accept them. I'd be interested to know in the comments, by the way, if, if you would accept a warlock of the Tarrasque in your game. So feel, feel free to go ahead and let me know if this is a little OP or not. Uh, it gets really OP around 14th level. Um, it's, it seems like it's almost fitting for maybe fourth edition D&D maybe, but I don't know. Let's go ahead and start this uh, party here. As a warlock with a Tarrasque patron, your connection to the legendary creature is both awe-inspiring and perilous. Bound by a pact forged in shadows, you wield powers stolen from the slumbering beast, tapping into its raw might. The fury of the Tarrasque surges through your veins, empowering your every action with an untamed force that sets you apart from other warlocks. However, you must tread cautiously, for your pact remains concealed from the very entity whose power you harness, aware that the wrath of the awakened Tarrasque could be catastrophic. This, to me, uh, gives a lot of flavor here as to if this is a character that you're, you're playing. First of all, that I think there's some, maybe the warlock has anger issues, almost like a, like a Hulk type of deal where if you get angry, you know, maybe spikes start to show up on your skin uh, to where you could feel like the Tarrasque is almost breaking through. Um, but also the fact that the, how you got this power of the Tarrasque, it says that the power is, you know, that the Tarrasque is unaware somehow that you have this power and, and yet you have it. So I don't know exactly what that means and how that plays out in your game, but that's an interesting, uh, an interesting dynamic that somehow you stole it or came by it in some kind of interesting way uh, that would add a lot of flavor and backstory to your character. Okay, let's get into Tarrasque's Might. At first level, you gain proficiency with heavy armor and your Warlock hit dice increases from 1d8 to 110. Uh, I'm not against that. I, I think uh, wearing armor is certainly a, um, an interesting proposal for, uh, for a Warlock. And it would be, you know, really cool with some spikes on it. You know, something that is really Tarrasque oriented. Maybe there, maybe later on he can he can get some actual Tarrasque armor. But um, at the beginning, maybe he just fashions it to look like a Tarrasque. Terrifying presence. At first level, you tap into the terrifying aura of the Tarrasque, gaining the ability to invoke fear in those around you. I like this because maybe there's a shadow that comes up behind you that looks like a like that looks like a Tarrasque. That would be kind of a fun flavor uh, filled uh, spell or, or um, you know, ability to be able to do. As an action, you can force all creatures of your choice within 30 feet of you to make a wisdom saving throw against your warlock spell save DC. On a failed save, a creature becomes frightened for one minute. A frightened creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turn, ending the effect on a success. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Reflective Resilience. 
At sixth level, your pact with the Tarask grants you a fraction of its legendary defense. You gain the ability to cast the counter spell with, without expending a spell slot. A number of times equal to your charisma modifier, minimum of one, you regain all expended uses of this feature after finishing a long rest. Additionally, when you successfully use Counterspell to negate a spell of third level or higher, you can use your reaction to reflect the energy of the countered spell back at the caster if the spell would cause damage. The caster must make a dexterity saving throw against your warlock spell save DC. On a failed save, they take full damage of the spell they were attempting to cast while you take, while you take no damage. On a successful save, they take half damage and you take no damage. You can reflect a spell back at the caster this way once per short or long rest. I think this is, um, I don't know, maybe a little OP, uh, but once again, um, I still like it. I said, Paul, would you allow it in your game? I would. I would because I think, once again, the interesting the interesting part of this is that, Paul, it's, it's unbalanced. Well, you know what? I'm not necessarily in favor of of balanced games. I don't mind when my players go ballistic. I don't care if they kill all my monsters. I just don't. They're here they're here to play a game. Uh I can make it interesting, uh but ultimately they're going to they're going to play and and I'm going to try to make it difficult for them, but I don't mind if if there's a little OP and they're a little unbalanced because like I said, I can always dial up hit points. I can always dial up, you know, the armor class. I can always dial up certain abilities. And so I think there's a fun back and forth. Um, between players and between me and the and the monsters or foes or other things, um, but at least in my games, you know, if you have a little uh, a character like this, I don't mind it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, interesting things can happen. Like I don't know what happens if you use your powers too much or or you you do something to offend the Tarask, your patron. Well, maybe that patron decides it wants to come hunting for you, and now you have a Tarask hunting your your warlock patron for some reason because you angered it. See, that's how that's how it works in my game. I'll I'll let you get away with a lot of things, but I'm also plotting and planning in the background. Unyielding Beast. At 10th level, your connection with the Tarask enhances your endurance and resilience. You gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapons. Additionally, you deal double, double damage to objects and structures. I like that. Uh, starting a Rampaging Force. At 14th level, you can channel the immense power of the Tarask to rapidly grow in size to crush your foes. As an action, you can choose to triple your size in all dimensions and multiply your weight by 30 for the next 10 minutes. I, I just think that's fun to think of uh, a warlock getting that big inside of a dungeon and just going crazy. I think of like... Um, uh, in X-Men, Juggernaut, where it just starts breaking th breaking through walls and just building up speed and momentum and uh, chaos just starts ensuing inside of a dungeon, which, of course, will collapse on you as, as you can continue to do that. So there's, uh, there's pluses and minuses to that. This growth increases your size by two categories, from medium to huge, for example. If there isn't enough room for you to triple your size, you attain the maximum possible size in the space available. While your rampaging force is active, you gain the following effects. Your strength score increases by six to a maximum of 24. You have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. You gain a number of temporary hit points equal to five times your warlock level. Your weapons grow to match your new size. While these weapons are enlarged, your attacks with them deal 2d4 extra damage. Your spells that deal uh, your spells that deal damage deal one additional damage die. You can return to your normal size as an action. Once you use this feature, you must complete a long rest before using it again. And once again, I don't hate that. I, I think that's a fun, fun thing to do at 14th level. At 14th level, you're getting the ability to do this. And by then, you know, you're fighting, you know, bigger dragons, bigger giants. You know, you're fighting big things at that point. At least I would. If this character is here in my game, I am making sure that they are fighting large things. And yes, sometimes putting a, a, a big thing of, you know, of uh, like a army of gnolls that you just are just careening through, like a speeding, like a stolen car just running, <laughs> running through them and just creating this chaos, uh, w which would be a ton of fun to watch. So yeah, that is the uh, Warlock 
uh, of a, a Warlock subclass, the Tarask. Let me know down in the comments. What do you think of this class? I think it's fun. I would allow it. Um, but you tell me in the comments what you think uh, about it. I, once again, it'd make a great big bad uh, for some of your your OP characters that you think are OP, well, go ahead and drop a Warlock of the Tarask in your game and see how they feel about that. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching today. Be sure to go and click that thumbs up button that tells me you like the video and you want more of them. And I will catch you in the next video, which will probably be a 99 cent subclass. We'll catch you then. Thank you.